What you're about to see is the weirdest restaurant in the world. It's a 50 course, seven hour long meal where you'll eat literal butterflies, eyeballs, tongues, and do whatever this is. But it's also a restaurant that's turning magic into reality. Not only do they have the most insane restaurant experience, but they're also advancing the food space with their world-class research, turning leftover beer grains into chocolate and experimenting with ant pheromones. They're determined to make a positive difference in the world, but the question is, can they actually do it? This is Alchemist in Copenhagen, my favorite restaurant in the world. Copenhagen is one of the world's best food cities. It's home to not one, but two restaurants that were named number one in the world. And Alchemist is the most likely to become the third, being ranked in the top 10 in the world and having two Michelin stars. But their ambitions go far beyond that. I've actually created two videos on Alchemist before. The first was on the dining experience, and the second was focused on what it actually takes to run a restaurant like this. So if you haven't seen those videos, make sure to go watch them. But for this video, we're not only going to focus on the dining experience, but we're actually gonna focus on the research research they're doing through their new research company, Spora. The meal at Alchemist always has a bizarre start, but this was by far the weirdest start to a meal I've ever had. You walk into a dark room and a giant box with visuals lights up and it seems pretty normal until... Bro, wait, that was, that was you. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> They literally put our faces onto the screen, replacing the faces in historic photos. It starts off really lighthearted with Mr. Beast and memes, but then it accelerates into more political imagery. Things that are happening today and things that are changing the world, and then it culminates with this. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. We'll find out in a little bit how they do that and what it means, but immediately afterwards, you're whisked into their lounge and hit with a bunch of starting bites. Classics like their Smoky Ball, which is named that because, well, I think it's obvious, their fluffy cotton candy dumplings, and of course, their butterflies. These are real butterflies sitting on top of a little chip. Funnily enough, this is not my first time having a butterfly. Yes. Oh my god. It <laughs> gets me every time a little bit, though. Yeah. Combination. Delicious. <laughs> But the next dish is really the start of some of their exciting research. We have a little space bread, this like aeration of ingredients taken to a limit and create this instantly crunchy bite and then it disappears. Rasmus is talking about space bread because Alchemist is actually preparing to be the first fine dining meal served in space with an expedition planned next year. And some of you might think that this is pointless, that this is all for show, but the research that they're doing, including the research for this space bread, actually has a lot of real world applications. That technique we now use in the kids' hospital menu for kids with cancer where they get chemotherapy, can have these open wounds and craving for something crunchy but don't want the side effects of swallowing it. That's the interesting part, it's not to go to space or you hopefully can drive a, a change through the innovations that's happening in a project like that. You finish in the lounge with the last three bites that are really focused on pure taste. The best version of an omelette that you can imagine, a sunburnt bikini sandwich that's cheesy, doughy, and fatty all at the same time, and a vanishing sea buckthorn tonic to cleanse your palate. The next room is where the fun really starts. But before we go there, we first got the chance to go to their research lab to see the science that powers all of their creations and get our first taste of some truly magical things that they're doing. We started off with a demonstration of how they turn rapeseed cakes, which is a byproduct from making canola oil, into meat. This is not something we eat uh, as humans, at least. It's very bitter. Mm. And we have developed a process in Spora where we can take these bitter compounds and reduce them so that it becomes palatable and healthy for us. And through fermentation, we also unlock a lot of the really wonderful flavor potential this actually has. Just to make it clear, this tastes just like meat, but with no actual meat products. It's literally just canola cakes that we saw before. And the fact that they can turn inedible byproducts into healthy and delicious foods actually has a huge impact. What's really, really interesting about this in the bigger picture is that it's a really big crop in the world. There's more than 80 million tons produced globally. And in Europe, around 50% of the protein that we grow on the field, so not, not protein from animals, is actually locked inside of this. And even though it might feel like magic or alchemy to be able to transform materials like this, 
The basis of all of their research is the advancement of fermentation. We want to use fermentation principles to unlock the gastronomical potential that is uh, in, in otherwise unusable or dull food. That's how we use in our design of new exciting food opportunities for the future. So this is actually what we call the koji pearls. So these are actually what's fermenting in here right now. Oh. But here we separated them and put it into a salt solution. If we take a lot of plant material, it might be a bit dull in the taste, but then by doing fermentation, you can create umamis, which we all like. You can change it to something very tasty. We're just starting to get a glimpse of all the different projects they're working on, but it actually takes a ton of work. So a couple of years ago, Rasmus started Spora, which is the research company that is creating all of these innovations and trying to bring them to the world. We're gonna see a few more innovations in just a little bit, but I think it's time to introduce you to the dome. The dome is what makes Alchemist so unique. It's this ultra-immersive dining room with custom-made visuals and soundtracks, and it's in here where the meal starts to get really weird. And we started with their most iconic dish, 1984. It's indeed dedicated to George Orwell and his dystopian novel because the novel from 75 years ago now is our everyday life. And we've just showed an example in the artificial intelligence, but at the same time we face it every day just by posting on social media, but at the same time really losing the control on who has access to that data. Okay, so now you're starting to see how that AI room sort of links to some of the concepts in dinner, in this case, about our loss of privacy. But the way they actually do that is pretty crazy. They have cameras set up around the room when you enter, and the servers have to talk to you for a certain amount of time before you actually enter the experience so that they can capture everything they need to upload it into that video that you saw earlier. Pretty crazy stuff. But the next dish is sort of the opposite of the previous one, simply inspired by one of Rasmus's favorite foods, the lobster roll. We take the local lobsters from the West Coast. We would make a kind of like a lobster salad from the tail and the claw meat and then flash freeze it inside the mold that looks like the claw. On the side, you have the sauce and it's buttery emulsion with a horseradish and fermented sort of meat on top for you. The dishes in this first section focus heavily on seafood. And even though there are a few dishes that are a bit odd, like 1984, this section still feels pretty tame for alchemist standards. You have dishes like Plastic Fantastic, which is about plastic waste in the ocean. But after this set of seafood dishes is when the meal really starts to get weird. By the way, if you wanna see more videos like this about the craziest food around the world, make sure to subscribe below because when we hit a million subscribers, I'm gonna be taking one of you to a dinner just like this. Anyway, let's get into the weird stuff. The first dish is a little bit unexpected because you literally have to eat your own face. They 3D print your face with a dip that you drag your chips through and eat. Not gonna lie, it reminds me of the tortillas from the movie The Menu. But the body parts don't end there because for the next dish, you have to French kiss the chef. The dish is presented on a prosthetic tongue that you pick up and lick. It looks crazy, but it's just a beef tartare. It's actually not that crazy. It just looks nuts. And the interaction is nuts. And the next dish featured a fairly uncommon ingredient. It was very interesting for Chef Rasmus to learn the fact that some ingredients in some cultures we appreciate more than in others. And he could never understand this taboo and that's where the idea came, to actually work with something that some cultures, they celebrate it as the most important part of the animal. And that would be the brain. One of the things that makes Alchemist so special is the fact that they're willing to go outside of the box and think about applications beyond conventional food. And there's no better project to showcase this than their work with ants. So we headed to Spora's headquarters to see their ant farm. In this chamber, we have uh, leaf cutter ants. They're coming from French Guiana. They are really particular and they're really fascinating as they have a very special symbiosis with an other organism, which is what we see here, which is a fungal organism. Why do we have them? Yeah. It's because we think this is really fascinating. We think that this symbiosis teaches us. We, we have a lot to learn from them. You know, they, they harvest this material, which, which is actually useless to them. And then they give it to the fungus. And then in return, they get this ambrosia. And as well, they have a really, really interesting smell. So they cannot speak. They communicate through pheromones, but it has all these different aromas which we relate to flowers. And so this, this is made out of mostly the soldier ants, which have a really high content of these pheromones. Wow. Chanel number five. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's really amazing to see a team that has so much freedom to explore concepts, and the result of their scientific research are dishes that seem to bend the mind like this next one back at Alchemist. Your chicken head has been deboned. We have only the beak on, the fat and the skin on. We press it with the enzymes of salt and we break it so it becomes crispy. Underneath we have a smoked Danish cheese and then with a little bit of beluga caviar. It is so crunchy. Holy crap. Ingredients. This place is so cool. I feel like we've taken a look at all the really cool stuff that they're doing with science to go beyond what food possibly can be, how they're using enzymes to help push down that head and compress it into a chip. We're seeing how they're able to use all these different techniques that haven't really been seen before to create dishes that are just so, so special. What really makes Alchemist and Spora special are their philosophies around experimentation. The meal at Alchemist, of course, is odd, but it's for a good reason. They're continually testing different techniques and concepts with the goal of seeing how far they can push these different things. I think to take certain things to the extreme, I think is interesting. What you find out in that process is that there's a lot of things, a lot of inventions, a lot of creativity. And if you look at it from a more holistic perspective, you could get it out in society and, and scale it up. Some dishes here might feel a bit over the top, but this next one had one of the most powerful messages of the night. Hunger is representing a paradox in our society where 30% of food we produce is actually going to waste. And then if we look in the global population, it's 10% of people that are living in hunger conditions. So technically we already have enough resources to feed the world, but the challenges we face is in the distribution. And while world hunger might be this huge problem to tackle, Rasmus has actually started locally with his initiative to feed the homeless population in Denmark called junk food. So we headed to their new kitchens to see how they actually do this. Junk food started in 2020 when COVID hit. We had the first lockdown in, in Denmark. We had four empty kitchens. I called the social mayor and said, like, can we do this food for, for the homeless? We had already started a little bit junk food project. And she was calling me back like two hours later and say, I have 200 homeless for tomorrow. And after the first day of delivery, I have 500 for the day after. And it turned out that there was a big need for it. So we got a kitchen, we started the organization, hired a couple of alchemist chefs. So basically it's just to provide a hot meal every day to the most vulnerable in our society. And we have done that since 2020. Every day we get a lot of waste products from our suppliers. Also things that alchemists where we can't use, part of the tongue example. But that way we have some ingredients we can't use at alchemists, we can use it there. Junk food is a great example of how even though Rasmus, Alchemist and Spora are so scientific, they recognize that some solutions just require a little bit of manpower and creativity. It's important that we have some creative chefs there as well. They can think about like how can we take these ingredients when we get uh, eight pallets of uh, noodles or like a pallet of toffee fee. Like how do you take some of these waste streams and how do you coordinate a whole menu maybe for three, four, five months? So in that way, it's, it's very important to have a strong chef team that can navigate in that because many of the soup kitchens that we have visited before in Denmark is mainly based on volunteer work. That's also amazing, but it's just hard to get a volunteer in that maybe don't even have a chef background to stand with a pallet of noodles and say, okay, what do I do? How do I preserve this and how can I make sure that we can cook something maybe in two months from now? We really try to figure out how can we make this as easy as possible for us to invest in big steamers that's electric, to invest in a machine that can make meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> because we have the ambition of scaling it up, we want to not just do the 5,000 covers in Denmark, we also want to go to the Nordics after, so Sweden and Norway, Finland, and eventually maybe in the States, because there's quite a big problem there with people on, on the edge. And back at the dinner at Alchemist, we actually got to try the dish that used the same beef tongue that was used at junk food. Really tender, really chewy, super almost just melts your mouth. Really, really high level of precision and technicality to get the beef tongue to be that sort of texture. Completely fitting of what Alchemist is doing here. This next dish though was probably my favorite of the night conceptually. This one we call Bubuzing Biodiversity. So when Chef Rasmus was a teenager, he would go on the scooter together with his friends. The moment he takes off his helmet, he can see on the windshield tons of bugs and insects, you know, smashed against it. Try to do it nowadays. Your windshield is clean. And that is one of the indications how actually we are losing biodiversity in terms of our nature. And as we headed to desserts, we had a couple dishes based on the research that Spora has done outside of the restaurant. 
So this one is our new Spura Intermedia. As I mentioned before, we have made a scientific project together with Berkeley University and our innovations in food. What we discovered was that the fungi live on top of oncom, this Indonesian kind of temper. We inoculated into the substrate and fermented it. They created these kind of sugar flavors. So we have another one that is tied to some of the stuff that we've seen earlier today. We learned a lot about fermentation and using fungi. Here, it turned it into this beautiful dessert. Wow. That is such a nice flavor. It is really just purely sweet. The texture, gorgeous, and that syrup, strong, but it's balanced out nicely by more subtle, delicate flavors of, of the rest of the dish. In my previous videos, we talked about their blood donation program. And this next dish broadened the message to be about organ donations and how being an organ donor could potentially save up to eight lives per person with this beating heart dessert. But for our final dish in the dome, we had yet another magic trick from Spora, turning the leftover grains from beer production into chocolate. There's no cacao bean, no cacao butter. We create it with the spent grain and then some alternative butters to create the experience you have when you uh, eat chocolate. So how it snaps and how it melts and shines. It's really about making something delicious. This literally blew my mind. A byproduct that is normally discarded in today's world, they figured out how to turn it into all of these different chocolate products that taste exactly like chocolate. Whoa, it's, this is uh, sick. <laughs> it's, it's other plant fats. Oh my God, whoa. I can't believe how much that actually tastes like chocolate. I certainly got the joy of eating chocolate. <laughs> <I> was... <laughs> and then for the dessert at Alchemist, they actually turned it into a chocolate bar for me. To make that into like a sustainable chocolate, where it's a waste product, we don't have any deforestation, we don't have any child labor working in bad conditions. I think it's a very relevant product to the market right now, especially with the pressure days on the chocolate industry right now. I just cannot get over how much that tastes like chocolate without being anywhere close to chocolate. What a beautiful night. Alchemist is doing some crazy stuff. You've seen it in the other videos that their dinner is insane, but hopefully now you see that they're really trying to reach so far beyond what they're doing in the restaurant. Now the research is obviously incredible, but the meal can be a little bit jarring, intense, and heavy because of the messaging. So before we headed into our final bites in the lounge, we actually had a quick little pit stop to take the edge off and just have a little bit of fun. to their balcony for some final bites. And even here, we saw a little influence from Spora. So the first one was a little amber with ants. Not the same ants, but cool little continuation there. And this last one, which we did see them in the fermentation chambers, this representation of Koji with the little fungi pearls, which is such a cool touch in a drink. Whoa. Really sharp flavor. The texture is cool, almost like little sago balls. That is a palate cleanser that wakes you up for sure. A really cool final way to use some of the things we saw a little bit earlier today in a little drink. And after seven hours at the restaurant, we were headed back to reality. Alchemist and Spora are doing things that seem almost impossible, with implications that could completely change food as we know it. Whether it's in the restaurant, in Copenhagen, or around the world, Rasmus and the entire team are showing just how far a restaurant can go in making an impact on the world.